We'd like to start off today by sharing a very old and very beautiful story about the Buddha and a beggar. There once was this young homeless man who was gathering food and every day he noticed his food kept disappearing. One day he caught the mouse who stole his food and he told him, what are you doing? I'm a homeless beggar. Steal from someone who's richer, they won't even notice. And the mouse replied, but it's in your destiny. And the homeless beggar, shocked, said, why is that my destiny? And the mouse replied, I don't know, go ask the Buddha. So he goes on a journey to meet the Buddha. He had been traveling all day and late into the night it was cold and dark and he saw a home on the horizon and he decided to knock on the door and ask if he could stay the night. They agreed to have him stay, but they wanted to know why a young man would be out so late at night wandering. And he told them he was on his way to meet the Buddha to ask him a question about his destiny. And so the family asked, could you ask a question for us as well? And he said, of course. They said, our teenage daughter cannot speak. Could you please ask the Buddha when our young daughter will be able to speak? And he said, of course, I'm sorry to hear that. So, he uh, stayed the night and then started his journey again the next morning. As he continued on, he arrived at this huge mountainous range that he had to get across. So he climbs up the first mountain and at the top he meets a wizard. The wizard asks him, why are you trying to cross such a huge mountainous range? And the young man replied, I'm on my way to find the Buddha. I have a question for him about my destiny. And the wizard then asked him, could you ask a question for me as well? And the young man said, of course, yes, what is it? And the wizard said, I've been trying for 1,000 years to get to heaven, and according to my teachings, I should have got to heaven by now. What must I do to get to heaven? And the young man said, of course, I will ask your question for you. And then that moment, the wizard took his magical staff, flew the two of them across the mountains, and the beggar continued on his journey. Finally, he reached a large river, one that would have been impossible to overcome. But he saw a large turtle, and he asked the turtle if he could climb upon his shell and he could swim him to the other side. And the turtle agreed, but he asked, well, why do you want to cross the river? And he said, well, I'm on the way to ask the Buddha a question about my destiny. And he said, could you ask a question for me as well? And he said, of course. He said, I've been alive for 500 years. According to my teachings, I should have become a dragon by now. When will I become a dragon? And so the young man agreed to ask his question. He swam him across the river and he continued on his journey. The young man finally meets the Buddha. And at this point, there are so many people that have gathered around the Buddha. So the Buddha tells everyone, I will answer three questions for everybody, but only three questions. The young man was shocked. He had four questions to ask. So he thought hard and he thought about the turtle who's been alive for 500 years trying to become a dragon and the wizard who's been trying for a thousand years to get to heaven and that poor teenage girl who's gonna have to live her whole life being unable to speak. So he compared his problems to theirs and his suddenly didn't seem so bad anymore. He could always just go back to begging. He felt sorry for the turtle, the wizard, and the teenage girl. So he decided to ask their questions instead. So he asked the Buddha, and the Buddha answered. The Buddha explained that the turtle would become a dragon, but only when he was willing to leave the comfort of his shell. Until he could leave the comfort of his shell, he wouldn't become the dragon he was destined to be. The wizard would ascend to heaven, but only when he was willing to let go of his magical staff. It was anchoring him to the earth and he took it everywhere he went. Once he could let it go, he would ascend to heaven. And finally, the young girl would be able to speak, but only when she met her soulmate. So he thanked the Buddha and began his long journey home. So his first encounter on the way home was with the turtle. And he told the turtle, turtle, all that you have to do to become a dragon is just take off your shell, leave the comfort of that shell and you will become a dragon. So that very moment, the turtle takes off his shell, and inside were the most priceless pearls found in the deepest parts of the ocean. He hands his shell over to the young man and says, thank you, I don't need this anymore because I'm a dragon. And he flew away. Next he ran into the wizard, he said, wizard, I have great news. You can go to heaven, but first you must let go of your magical staff. It's 
anchoring you to the earth. When you can let it go, you will ascend to heaven. At that point, the wizard took his staff, handed it to the young man and said, here, take it. I don't need it anymore. And he ascended into heaven. So the young man now had the wealth of the turtle and the power of the wizard. He finally continues on the last stretch of his journey home and he reunites with that family that gave him shelter for the one night. And he told the family, the Buddha said that your daughter will be able to speak, but once she meets her soulmate. And that very moment, the daughter walked down the stairs and asked, is that the man that was here last week? This is a beautiful story and one that is rich in valuable lessons. But rather than us telling you what we think you should take from it, we'd like to hear from you. What lessons did you learn from that story or what did you learn about what it takes to truly be a hero? If anyone has any insights they had learned from this story, just kindly raise your hand. We'd love to hear them. Yes. Very good. So he gave up what he wanted for the other people. So he was willing to make sacrifices for the other people. Very, Very good. good. Very good. Any more insights? People would like to share? Yes. You should be kind. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. Yes. Your hero's journey isn't alone, that's yes. right. There are teachers along the way. And one more lesson we want to just throw in there that sometimes gets overlooked is that in our story, we get to choose whether we're the victim or the hero of our own story. In this case, the young man decided that he was going to be a hero. And by showing that courage, he not only became the hero of his own story, but that of the turtle, the wizard, and the young girl as well. So thank you for your answers. We really do appreciate it. And this really shows the value and the beauty of storytelling. It's a, it really has a transcendent quality and is the reason why our ancestors used it as their primary means of passing along information, culture, and history for generations and why it's still an invaluable part of our society today. My sister is a master storyteller. And I remember being at one of her talks once and she was sharing a story from her youth and it was a powerful story and afterwards, just like Denise and I did, uh, asked the audience, what did you take from the story? And I was amazed at how many different answers came back. Some of them didn't even seem to have anything to do with the story that she had just shared, but it touched something deep inside of them. Maybe it was a memory, and they had profound insights. So it's amazing how a single story can teach many lessons. Our brains are also pre-programmed to remember stories. I don't know about you, but I struggle. Oh, I went way far forward. Go back. There we go. That's a brain. So our brains are pre-programmed. So often we struggle to remember grocery lists, even like three items. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't like bananas, apples, oh. and phone numbers, simple things. But we often could recall the entire storyline of a movie like Star Wars. Who's ever had that experience? Movie, grocery list of items. We tend to remember a storyline a lot easier. And this is why mystics and prophets throughout history have used parables, simple stories to illustrate a spiritual and moral lesson. And these short stories are very impactful and easily recalled. But unfortunately, throughout history as well, not everyone has used the power of storytelling for good. Advertisers and politicians have used and misused the art of storytelling to create a narrative that is beneficial to their agendas. But most often, the biggest culprit of disempowering stories in our lives tends to come from ourselves. So are you accurately portraying yourself in the story you tell yourself? Are you showing compassion and empathy like you easily could show to others, to yourself, or do you Kick yourself when you're down. Are you critical? Do you discourage yourself? Do you set unhealthy boundaries? Good intentions coupled with overwhelm can easily lead a hero into martyrdom. And because we here at the Hero Roundtable need you, your communities need you, your schools and your families need you, we need you to take care of yourself not to burn out, but to give yourself the self-love and self-care necessary to keep running on all heroic cylinders. Because if you can't truly love yourself and care for yourself, how can you truly love another? 
Imagine if you were as critical with your friends and family as you are with yourself. How big would your circle really be? And the truth is, the beggar from the story earlier, he had to love himself first to go on such a journey because he could have also chosen to be a martyr. He could have just sulked and been like, well, I guess uh, I have bad luck and there's no point in going to the Buddha because it's my destiny and may as well accept it. And... <sighs> but he chose to show courage and he went on a hero's journey. And during this journey, he showed empathy and he put himself in other people's shoes. And by doing that, he showed the strength and the sacrifice that needed to be shown in order to become the man he needed to become to then finish his hero's journey and ultimately change his destiny. So we all have the same transformative opportunity as the beggar did. We could choose to be a victim or we could choose to be our own hero. So what story are you going to choose? What path are you going to choose? So right now we'd like to try a very brief exercise. I'd like everyone to think of a story. Now I'll give you some parameters. It needs to be a story you tell yourself on a regular basis. We're talking weekly, daily, maybe even several times a day. But most important, it needs to be disempowering and cast you as the victim. So just take a moment, think of this story. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do is rewrite it. We're not going to change the events so much as the meaning of those events to you. As an example, we're going to give you some tools to do this. Imagine the villain or the antagonist in your story. Imagine them wearing a jester's hat and like a jester's suit and like it's really hard to take them seriously now. Maybe you shrink them down until they're six inches tall and when this little voice squeaks out, it's completely non-threatening. Since you are the DJ in your own mind, maybe you want to add some music. Maybe you want to lighten the mood, put on some what did the fox say? Or maybe you want to empower yourself. So you put on um, some Beyonce or the Rocky theme song. Maybe you've never fairly portrayed yourself in your own story. Maybe you haven't given yourself credit for being the bigger person or seen a silver lining that may have been there and by following that new lesson, learning that lesson, it might change your future. This is the power of retelling your story. So we challenge each of you to write and rewrite your story in an affirming, empowering, and supportive way so that you can share your individual brand of heroism in a world that's in desperate need of heroes. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.